prepare yourself for a transformative experience as you delve into the remarkable insights shared by Andrew Huberman, a distinguished authority in neuroscience. You're breathing, you're working, whether or not you're holding your breath or you're stressed, every five minutes or so, you do this. In this captivating video, Huberman reveals a treasure trove of wisdom on stress termination, igniting a flame of empowerment within each viewer. So, first of all, stress is not just in the brain, not, and therefore not there is fear, trauma, or anxiety. With his profound understanding of the human brain, he unravels the intricate mechanisms behind stress, providing a profound framework for liberation. And so hypnosis, we don't think of, and it's not studied in his lab or in our lab as, as something that is, you know, stage hypnosis with a pendant and getting people to engage in behaviors they don't want. It's all about directing the nervous system toward heightened, more rapid plasticity so that they more readily engage in behaviors they do want, like reduced anxiety and things like smoking cessation, the ability to quit certain behaviors. Through evidence-based strategies and alternative approaches deeply rooted in scientific research, Huberman guides us so that we can rewrite our relationship with stress. By embracing mindfulness and cultivating resilience and nurturing self-care practices, we unlock the power to transform stress into a catalyst for personal growth, empowerment, and lasting well-being. Which I want. I don't know if you want. I'm just... There's actually a simple practice that you can do if ever you're in conversation or in an environment where you're stressed, you're trying to find a, a plane gate that you're running to, you're trying to find somebody God forbid you've lost your kid. You actually um, want to dilate your gaze. You can consciously do this by, you can do this even now, just as we're talking, you can start to, you don't move your head or eyes, it's fine to blink, but what you're trying to do is see the periphery of the room, the ceiling, you actually want to see your body in the visual scene that you're in. So this video marks the beginning of a transformative odyssey where stress becomes a portal to self-discovery, inner strength and profound fulfillment. There's a state that David's lab has studied for a long time, which is a state of hypnosis, which is sort of a unique combination of alert and asleep. It's a narrowing of context, but in a sort of relaxed, drowsy state, within which data from da David's lab have shown again and again in very controlled studies, allows us to self-direct our plasticity toward particular outcomes. Andrew Huberman, a illuminating figure in the field of stress management, invites you on a captivating expedition, you little explorer. In this expansive and profound video, Huberman unveils a boundless reservoir of knowledge and wisdom. Drawing upon his deep understanding of neurobiology, he reveals the intricate inner workings of stress and provides us with a holistic toolkit to overcome its grasp. That reach out about this is you can also raise your stress threshold. You can, let's say you're the kid or the person who is not super aggro. You're not a cardio, right? <laughs> yeah. You're just, you're kind of timid, right? It's chances are you're either smart about not wanting to damage yourself, right? Uh -huh. Or it could be that you have a heightened level of anxiety. He empowers us to rewrite the narrative of stress in our lives. And he invites us to do that with evidence-based strategies and alternative approaches. We embark on a transformative journey of self-discovery, personal growth and lasting well-being by embracing mindfulness practices, fostering emotional resilience and cultivating self-compassion. And when we're stressed, there's a lot of activity in these brain regions. And then we got this, our forebrain, our prefrontal cortex for the aficionados. And when we're in a thinking and calm and deliberate and rational manner, when we can control our body and our mind, it's called top-down processing. We're, we're controlling ourselves, but there's a lot of friction with that limbic pathway. I promise I'll get to the practices uh -huh. soon. So <clears throat> when there's this friction, we can call it limbic friction for sake of discussion. There, you can't control all those impulses and all that anxiety or fatigue for too long. And in fact, as you get more tired, or if someone has frontal damage, if they have brain damage to the frontal lobes, what you find is they become more impulsive when they feel like sleeping, they just sleep, even if it's socially inappropriate. When they feel like yelling or screaming or swearing, they just they just do that. And so mm. there's two kinds of limbic friction. One is when we're too activated and we want to calm down and we're trying to say, calm down, don't say, don't say the thing that you know you shouldn't say. <laughs> don't do the thing you don't you know you shouldn't do. And then there's the other kind of limbic friction, which is the world is happening really fast and we feel buried, we're overwhelmed, and we need to get more activated.
We need more energy. We need more energy. We need to be able to lean into life and we're feeling overwhelmed. What's that called? Well, we, we should come up with a name now. <laughs> so that would be um, exhaustion, like stress exhaustion or, stress yeah. or um, overwhelm stress or, or overwhelm stress. Yeah. Or um, now a lot of people start giving these names to things that sound almost like clinical syndromes, mm. which sometimes they are, but they'll say things like adrenal burnout, which actually doesn't exist. Bear to be captivated by Andrew Huberman, a uh, luminary in stress termination as he unveils a profound tapestry of insights and strategies in this transformative video. Drawing upon his extensive knowledge of neurobiology, Huberman unravels the intricate layers of stress and reveals alternative pathways to liberation. Um, whereas when you go into kind of watch watchmaker's mode, you are looking for things that are happening over a very small um, space. And in the visual system and in the brain, this is really the key thing, space and time are linked. So if you have a narrow field of view, you're actually measuring smaller time increments. You're micro slicing your environment and you're micro slicing it in space and time. Whereas when you have broad swath of vision, you actually have bigger time bins. And here's a good example of it. If you are, um, you need to get home and you're in line at the, at the grocery store. And that is, you know, some places you're even in a mask, which is kind of uncomfortable and the person in front of you is returning something, it's going to seem like time is going by very, very slowly because you're micro slicing, you're getting higher frame rate, okay? However, when you're relaxed, it doesn't bother you at all. You're actually batching time in, in bigger swaths. And so the visual system drives your time perception system, okay? So if you're feeling stressed in conversation or public speaking or anything where you want to remain covert about that stress and you want to relax in a way that's covert, dilate your gaze, just try and open up the aperture of your field of view. The other thing you can do is exhale because in a very straightforward way, inhales speed up your heart rate and exhales slow it down. I'll just give, explain why that is. You've got this muscle called the diaphragm. The diaphragm is, is unique to mammals. It's really incredible, but it's, a, it's incredible because if it's a skeletal muscle, it's actually can be, it can work voluntarily in the background or you can take control of it. When you breathe in, your lungs expand, the diaphragm moves down. With his guidance, we embark on an empowering expedition towards reclaiming our well-being. Through evidence-based practices such as mindfulness, self-care and resilience building, we are equipped with the tools to transform stress into an opportunity for personal growth and empowerment this video marks the inception of a profound voyage where stress is no longer that formidable adversary, but a catalyst for self-discovery, resilience, and lasting fulfillment. Is as you get a little overactivated, your lungs are two big bags, but they have millions of little sacks. Like if we were to lay them out, they're about as big as a tennis court, mm -hmm. like a regulation tennis court, huge volume of tissue. And as you get stressed, those sacks collapse. They get flatten out like little balloons that are empty. And if you've ever blown up a balloon at a kid's party or an adult party, you're, you need to sometimes blow twice. It's the double inhale, what that does is it inflates those sacks so that when you exhale, you dump the maximum amount of carbon dioxide. Yeah. This also works really well. So you can do this anytime you're out and about, you're feeling a little stressed or somebody's talking you know, like, oh, this is stressful for whatever reason. The double inhale exhale is the fastest way that I'm aware of to just to calm down. Yeah. And so it's very useful. You can do it in real time. The other thing is if you're running, like you want to hit steady cadence, like zone two cardio, the double inhale exhale, this is some stuff I'm playing with with some various groups. So not all the data are in, but a lot of people benefit from doing double inhale exhale, double inhale exhale while they're in steady state cardio because it immediately maps your heart rate variability. The heart starts going in sync with your breathing. And the other thing it does, which is pretty wild, is that you have a connection called the phrenic nerve that um, controls the diaphragm, the skeletal muscle. But it has another branch, which goes to your liver. And if you've ever been running and you felt like that stitch in your side, sure. you feel like you're cramping, that's not really a cramp. That's actually liver pain. It's called it's called referred pain. And sometimes there's a shoulder pain that goes with it. Mm -hmm. It's usually actually on this side. And that's because all the neurons live in the same segment of the spinal cord. So if you do the double inhale, exhale, when you get that side cramp, it disappears. Cool. And so it's not really a cramp. It's some like a it's a kind of like referred uh, liver pain. So the double inhale, exhale is a very powerful tool. Andrew Huberman, a beacon of wisdom and stress management invites you to embark on a transformative odyssey of stress termination in this awe-inspiring video. 
With his deep understanding of neurobiology, Huberman unveils a rich tapestry of insights, guiding us to a life free from the clutches of stress. He empowers us to rewrite our relationship with stress through evidence-based strategies and alternative approaches and unlock our inner resilience. What you want to do is deliberately put yourself into a state of heightened alertness. You want to deliberately increase your adrenaline. There are a couple ways to do that. Mm. You can take a really cold shower. You can get to an ice bath. When you do that, there is no way around it. Your system will be filled with adrenaline. Like, oh, yeah. And then you learn how to control your breathing and relax. Uh -huh. Or if you don't have access to a cold shower or an ice bath, you can do what's called tumo breathing, which is actually hyperventilation. Mm. And I'll do this since it looks ridiculous. I'll, you know, I'll be the, the canary <laughs> in the, the mind. This is actually a lot like Wim Hof breathing. Okay. So okay. it's very different than the physiological side. And the idea is to actually get yourself stressed and then to be calm in a state where your body is filled with adrenaline. Interesting. It's it's a self-directed stress inoculation. And so I'm not going to do the whole thing, but sure. it would be 25 or 30 of these type of breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth like this. You'll notice your body starts to heat up. Oh. That's adrenaline release. You're literally heating up. Uh -huh. Okay. And then after 25 or 30 of those, you are going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel agitated. That's adrenaline trying to get you to move. You want to stay still, be like you're on, and then just <laughs> exhale all your air, sit for about 15 to 30 seconds. You can time it if you want and try and just be relaxed with all that adrenaline in your system. Then repeat 25 or 30 breaths, exhale, oh. relax for 15, 30 seconds. Then do it one more time, 25, 30 breaths. Exhale for 15 to 30 seconds. And then comes the fun part. You take a big gulp of air and then hold, but relax. <laughs> and what you'll notice is you can hold your breath a lot longer than you normally would. Why? Because the impulse to breathe actually comes from carbon dioxide and you've blown off a lot of carbon dioxide. We embark on a profound journey of self-discovery and personal growth by embracing practices such as mindfulness, self-compassion, and stress-reducing techniques. This video marks the beginning of a transformative adventure where stress becomes a stepping stone. When you exhale, the diaphragm moves up. There's actually a contraction of the heart in the thoracic cavity. It's a little smaller. There's the blood flows faster through that smaller volume and the brain sends a signal to slow the heart down. Simple way to remember it is inhales, speed your heart up transiently, exhales, slow it down. So. If you get stressed, exhaling is the key. Now there's another way to de-stress, and this is the fastest way that I'm aware of to de-stress. My lab works extensively on this, but it's something that's actually been known since the 30s, and that's what are called physiological size, S-I-G-H, size. Physiological size are actually something that you do every five minutes or so in sleep or wakefulness. You're breathing, you're working, whether or not you're holding your breath or you're stressed, every five minutes or so you do this you reinflate your lungs because the lungs aren't just two big bags of air. They actually have hundreds of millions of little sacs called avioli. And the, remember you bring in air, your trachea, it then creates a lot of volume by, by branching into the lungs. Then you have all these millions of sacs that if you were to lay them out, would be as, about as big as a tennis court, huge volume inside of you. And air or oxygen can actually move from those little sacs directly into the bloodstream and deliver oxygen to your brain and body. When you exhale, you dump carbon dioxide. Now the stimulus to breathe in is from neurons that sense carbon dioxide. When you aren't breathing enough, carbon dioxide levels go up and then it forces you to take a breath. Andrew Huberman, a pioneer in stress termination, presents a captivating video that delves deep into the realm of stress management and empowerment. With his extensive neurobiology expertise, Huberman unveils many insights and alternative strategies to liberate ourselves from the clutches of stress. Through evidence-based practices, he guides us, transforming stress into an opportunity for personal growth, an opportunity for resilience and inner harmony. So if you're feeling stressed out, do two inhales through your nose, even though the second one is a, is a shorter one. So it's... And then a long exhale through your mouth. Your lungs are two big bags of air, but they actually have little millions of little sacks of air. Mm called avioli of the lungs. Those, when you get stressed, a lot of the reason you get stressed is because those flatten out like little balloons and you can't offload carbon dioxide and high levels of carbon dioxide in your bloodstream are actually a big part of the stress response. It's not the only part, but it's a big part. When you do that double inhale, those little sacs reopen, pow, like kind of blowing open a balloon. 
they don't explode, but they reopen. And then the long exhale, you're able to offload yeah. the carbon dioxide. Oh, wow. So the fastest way to calm down really fast is that panoramic vision. And then just, <sighs> and then you'll notice you just calm way mm -hmm. down really yeah, fast. And yeah, you yeah. actually do this right before you fall asleep. We embark on an extraordinary journey of self-discovery and lasting well-being by nurturing mindfulness, fostering emotional intelligence, and adopting self-care rituals. This video should serve as a gateway to a world where stress is, well, I guess, to a world where stress isn't. The most simple way I can put it. We need to think about the brain, of course, as this contained within our skull, but also our entire nervous system, our spinal cord, and then connections between the organs of the body back to the brain. So the whole nervous system is what generates the stress response. And the simplest way to think about this is some event happens in the outside world. We perceive it. That's the exteroception component. So we see it. Okay, I see the, the troublesome thing. Uh, maybe a text message. These days, uh, a lot of stressors seem to show up in comments and text messages. You see something and it's like, whoa. So what happens? Eyes go wide. So we could dissect this piece by piece. But just to hit a few of the high points of the stress response, eyelids open. We rarely think about blinking as much of a stress response. But when we are stressed, our eyes go wide because these are shutters on our experience. I'm blinking intentionally now. When we're sleepy, we close our eyes. So eyes go wide, pupils dilate, and literally our perception of the external world changes such that we see certain things better than others and everything else fades away. We get tunnel vision, literally, because of changes in the optics of the eye that we don't have time to go into. But so that's part of the response. So your exteroception itself changes. We go into so to draw our tunnel vision. Now, there's also a signal that's sent. We hear about structures in the brain like the amygdala, so-called fear center, anxiety center, but we also get signals sent from the brain, the hypothalamus, which is basically above the roof of your mouth, down to what's called the sympathetic chain ganglia. It has nothing to do with sympathy for other people. Sympa means together. And basically a row of neurons that goes from about the base of your neck until your navel dominoes and releases adrenaline into your body. The physiological sigh is a pattern of breathing that we all engage in in deep sleep when levels of carbon dioxide in our bloodstream get too high. We, or our dogs, you can see your dog do this, will do a double inhale followed by an extended exhale. Children or, or adults for that matter that are sobbing and lose their breath, so to speak, will also do a double inhale exhale. That's the spontaneous execution of what we call the physiological sigh. The reason it works so well to relax us is because it offloads a lot of carbon dioxide all at once. And the way it works is the following. Our lungs are not just two big bags of air. We have all these little millions of sacks of air that if we were to lay them out flat, they would be as, as big as about a tennis court or so. The volume of air, therefore, and the volume of carbon dioxide that we can offload is tremendously high, except that we get stressed as carbon dioxide builds up on our bloodstream and it's kind of a double whammy. These little sacs deflate. Now, when we do a double inhale, so I'll do this now twice through my nose, or you could do this, or you could do it through your mouth, but it works best through the nose. It's inhale. And then you sneak a little bit more air in at the very end. When you do that, you reinflate those little sacs. And when you exhale, then you discard all the carbon dioxide at once.